Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about complex carbohydrates. So complex carbohydrates are carbohydrates that include three or more saccharides, meaning sugar molecules. Um, so we have oligosaccharides and polysaccharides that I will talk about here. Uh, so an oligosaccharide is a chain of three to 10 monosaccharides. Um, so these we actually don't digest and absorb, so they don't really have an effect on our blood glucose. Um, but they are still good for our health. They act as a prebiotic, meaning that we eat them. And even though they're not really supplying us with energy or nutrition, it's supplying our beneficial gut bacteria with nutrition. So we eat them and it's supplying our gut bacteria with food, which is very healthy and good for us. Um, there are many different types. They're found in fruits and veggies, and also several have been found in human breast milk. Polysaccharides are chains of 11 plus monosaccharides, and it could be hundreds of monosaccharides. Um, so carbohydrates are extremely large molecules. Um, so 11 plus is a polysaccharide, but generally we're talking about hundreds. Um, so there are three principal types, that's cellulose, starch, and glycogen. There are a few other types, but they are much less common. Um, really the three main types and the ones I'll talk about here are cellulose, starch, and glycogen. Um, so cellulose is a very long, strong chain of glucose. It's made up of hundreds of glucose units and they're connected by hydrogen bonds. Um, these are not digestible by humans. This is the primary component of dietary fiber. Um, so we eat cellulose, we eat dietary fiber, and we don't break it down and absorb it for, um, you know, the calories and the nutritious, you know, the, the nutrient rich benefits that, that's, we're not breaking it down. We're not absorbing it. Um, so instead it's just moving through our intestinal tract. Um, which is important. It helps keep, it helps to keep everything moving uh, smoothly and helps clean out the inside of our intestines. So uh, dietary fiber is very important. Um, starch is the energy storage molecule in plants. So plants through photosynthesis produce carbohydrates and a primary carbohydrate that they produce is a starch. These are chains of glucose molecules connected by alpha glycosidic bonds, which is a type of covalent bond, and we are able to break these. So we do break those bonds. Um, so we're breaking the bonds between glucose molecules so that we're able to absorb that glucose. Um, because these are very, very large compounds that are made up of many, many, many glucose molecules, it takes time for us to be able to break all of those bonds and get kind of a slow release of glucose into the bloodstream, which is very different from simple carbohydrates where we don't really have to break any bonds, um, no bonds at all in monosaccharides and one bond only in disaccharides. So we get a big rush of blood glucose uh, compared to complex carbohydrates where it takes much longer and we get a slow release of glucose into the blood. Glycogen is the energy storage molecule in animals. So animals produce glycogen as a way to store glucose. So humans do it, other animals do it. Um, in terms of eating glycogen, it's a negligible part of our diet. Um, so when we eat muscle meat from animals, it doesn't contain glycogen because it breaks down by the time we're actually consuming the meat. Um, there is some in organ meat, depending on the organ. Um, and none is contained in plants. So except for people who are eating a lot of organ meats, you're probably not getting any or very much glycogen in your diet. Um, but as an animal, you are producing a lot of glycogen. Um, so when we consume carbohydrates and our blood glucose goes up, insulin tells our cells to take that glucose up to use for fuel. When there's more glucose in the blood than what the cells need, then insulin tells the liver to store the remaining glucose. So it triggers the production of glycogen. So then the liver uh, creates glycogen, it's stored in the liver and it's stored in our skeletal muscle. Um, and so we store that glucose for later. Then if our blood glucose gets too low, we secrete a hormone called glucagon that tells our, our body to break down that glycogen to release that stored glucose into the bloodstream to, ri to raise our blood glucose. Um, 
Now, interestingly, when we store glycogen, we actually store at least three grams of water per gram of glycogen alongside that glycogen. Um, that's why, like, let's say somebody eats a lot of carbohydrates and then they stop eating a lot of carbohydrates. They go to a very low carb diet, for example, like a keto diet. Um, they'll lose a lot of weight really quickly, but most of what they're losing is because you're eating through that glycogen because your blood sugar is low. And as you get rid of glycogen, you're also releasing all of that water that you store with that glycogen. So that initial loss that happens in that first week in like a really low carb diet is the loss of all that glycogen and all the water that goes with it. Um, that's also why in that scenario, somebody might have what's commonly called like the keto flu, or they might just feel kind of uh, headachy, sore, tired, all those are actually symptoms of dehydration um, because without the carbohydrates that are um, allowing that glycogen to still be stored in the body, which allows the retention of that water, you're losing all that water very quickly, very suddenly. And so you're getting symptoms of dehydration, uh, which can be easily countered by making sure that you're fully hydrated and getting enough electrolytes with the water that you're replenishing with. We do not need to store water um, in terms of like, we don't need that water that we're losing. So that's not a problem. If you want to be on a very low carb diet and you lose all that water that you're storing with the glycogen, that's completely fine. You just need to drink more water to replenish. Um, so there's nothing physiologically wrong with that. It won't harm you. Um, so comparing our effects of simple carbs and complex carbs, I did this in the last video, so I'm going to be quick here. Um, but just a reminder that when we eat complex carbs, because they're gigantic molecules and we have to break off glucose one bond at a time, we get sort of a slow release of that glucose into the bloodstream compared to in simple carbohydrates where we get an immediate spike and then it, it falls back to normal again. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.